Alright guys, uh, here is the uh, rest of the uh, components of the Batmobile, uh, many of which were uh, customized, so I just wanted to give you an overview of the pieces and maybe some insight in how I, how I put it all together. So uh, let's start with those fins and uh, those grating fins in the, uh, in the front of the car. And the only thing I really did here is I just used the sort of orange mascara lines um, in the very front, uh, which will match the appropriate mascara lines, the under, sort of the lower lid mascara lines on the, uh, the front of the Bat Ray lights. And you can see the, the paint there. No big deal. Uh, the antenna was kind of an, in, an interesting conglomeration of pieces. Um, the actual antenna came off, I believe it was a 1970 Charger uh, from the Danbury Mint. It was an antenna. And the actual uh, uh, gold component of the bat beam uh, was from Oliver, created, created them. Uh, Oliver is from Germany as a modeler. And I was able to contact him actually from the boards and uh, he created this this wonderful uh, bat beam and very simple to bend and put together uh, it's definitely the right color and it goes very very well uh, with the Batmobile just an excellent uh, excellent piece and if you do uh, call or contact Oliver for this uh, bat beam piece um, remember just to bend the wings all in the same direction uh, and this way everything will be level and that was a mistake I made initially uh, but there you go so you don't make the same mistake so as we walk ourselves around we'll look at the rear windshield and the only thing I did here is uh, you know very carefully uh, you know painted the the chrome and then I added those four little rivets just like on the on the real Batmobile and that came out okay you can see that there uh, I spent quite a, quite a bit of time trying to get that all right and as we go to the other side, to the front, I'm sorry, this is the uh, the rear section, pardon me. And I made that uh, rotating hole for the sort of the windows on the Futura. And that came out pretty well. Uh, again, it took me a couple times to get this right, but I finally got it right. And I think it came out, came out very, very well. As we head over to the rear console here, um, some custom parts. Uh, included the little blue knobs again created by Kevin White and I was able to make some holes and add some extra chrome uh, that was not included in the deluxe kit uh, around that lower knob to make it look just like uh, it does in the Batmobile. I added uh, some custom uh, pull pins uh, for the parachutes and uh, some custom so, uh, racks to, to put them in and that kind of looks nice and this little shifter is also a custom piece, and this piece was obtained from an old Batmobile uh, model from the 80s, custom model, and I just incorporated that um, into, the <coughs> into the Batmobile. That looked much more realistic than the one that was included in the kit. Uh, the rear console itself is also a custom piece created by, uh, or fabricated by Kevin White, and I want to thank him again uh, for the piece. It had to be modified somewhat with those grooves. Uh, to fit uh, the side panels uh, of the cockpit. But again, with a little bit of work and trial and error, it worked out pretty well. And as we sort of walk around here, we see the bat, the uh, seats, uh, the bat seats. And uh, the, only, the only thing I did here really um, is created my own belts, and that's a, uh, I tried to match that cerise color, which is really kind of strange. Um, and then found the appropriate paint, uh, trial and error, uh, to paint uh, around the bat sign of the, on the buckle. And then again, I used uh, the um, seatbelt locking mechanism uh, was obtained off of an, uh, the same Danbury Mint model, and I just painted the base black, and that looked really good when everything's in place. And again, I'll pan across the other side, and more of the same looks pretty good and I'll just tack that down again and get everything in place the way it should be. Alright, as, as we walk our way back to the Batmobile um, I want to go to the antenna here, the rear antenna. Now this was a really tough piece to find and I tried to modify what, what came with the kit and it just didn't look right 
and I went back to the old uh, 1966 Batmobile website and kept looking at the antenna and said, where on earth did this antenna come from? Well, the, as best I can figure it, it, it comes off of a 60s Ford Thunderbird. And uh, I was able to obtain that again from a Danbury Mint model. Again, I had to bastardize the model, but er, anything and all things for the Batmobile, as you guys probably agree. And I was able to modify it and once and paint it properly, and once it's in place, it's going to look great. Um, I use that little uh, plastic uh, styrene piece, and that'll hold the antenna in place as it's glued. But again, a tough piece to figure out and then sort of obtain, but I think I got it right. I hope I got it right. These little wings will go... Uh, they are custom pieces, and they will uh, be illuminated, uh, just like on the Futura. Um, and these were created just with acrylic resin and some... Uh, stop uh, stop sign red from testers and uh, trimmed and modified so they fit right back uh, where the rear lights go and they'll be illuminated well uh, on the body of the Batmobile and of course uh, these are uh, custom aluminum tubes and they give you the directions on how to do this and the size to get uh, in the deluxe model kit and I just followed the directions and trimmed and, trimmed and sanded and it worked out very very well and there's the opposite uh, rear tail light piece. And those are the back grating fins there. And uh, these are the parachute bags uh, painted and uh, modified uh, and weathered a little bit to look a little more naturally um, and taped uh, with some uh, real metal uh, finishing tape and trimmed to the appropriate uh, position and size. The wires are 30 uh, gauge stainless steel wires. I just bent uh, and conformed to the proper dimension there. And this was a uh, custom um, fire that will uh, be illuminated uh, emanating from the turbine. And this was a fun piece to make actually. What I uh, did is I duplicated the beacon that came with the kit in, a, in clear, clear, uh, clear acrylic resin, carved it up, and painted it uh, with some uh, orange and red paint. And again, when, I, when it's on the Batmobile, I think it's going to look really, really good. And uh, those are basically the modifications I made um, you know, to the Batmobile kit. And now it's time to piece everything together. So in the next uh, mini installment here, I'm going to show you the uh, modifications I made to the body itself, including uh, some of the lighting. Uh, and again, I tried multiple times to paint those pinstripes, those orange fluorescent pinstripes on the uh, Batmobile body. I had the hardest time and I was not pleased uh, with my results. So what I ended up doing is I used the uh, snap kit body and it had great uh, pinstriping and uh, the only thing that will be modif modified on that body will be the uh, uh, bat ray uh, lower lid orange lines will be added or have been added and um, I think that's it for the body. Oh yeah, no. The what I'm what I'm also going to do is, uh, of course, sand it down and then use some uh, acrylic, a clear acrylic uh, finishing spray to just dull the coat a little bit. And, you know, on the Bat Show, on the Batman Show, um, that coat never really looked too shiny in most scenes, and I think it was dulled up a little bit so um, it would look, you know, kind of cooler and not so Hollywood. Um, and I'm going to try the same effect on the body. Um, so when I get the next installment, I'll show you the, the body modifications that I made and some of the uh, lighting I did. Thanks.